next one I have on my list is the uh, IWA Galil from The Way of the Gun. Um, and watch this. So it's a pretty decent shot. You probably can't see it because it's kind of dark and reflective, but. Mm -hmm. You've got Benicio del Toro um, in it, and they're in. It's right, right before the final iconic shootout um, in the in the little Mexican whorehouse down there. And I just remember it was so cool because they get attacked in this room, and he, without hesitating, he just starts unloading the gun through the walls and just systematically works around the room, you know. And then the, the camera pans out to the other side, and the guy has the bullet holes blasting over his head, and he's run trying to run away from it. Yeah, and it's just one of those things where, again, it's just burned in my memory. It's just, you know, and it's a 308 caliber, and, and they're kind of stucco center block walls, so FMJs, it could go through the wall. They did, you know, this movie has a ton of iconic gun scenes in it. They did an amazing job with this movie um, in, in the way that they do cover and movement and the, the way that they reload and, you know, and, and just their the fight scenes and um, all of that. But it, always wanted one of those galils since then just because of the power that it shows in that scene um, and they just did such an awesome job with it no yeah, I have not seen that movie it's it's well worth watching um, for, for Gun Beagle uh, and what would be without <laughs> the uh, Winchester 1887 from Terminator 2 uh, again another just iconic weapon from, fire, from movie history uh, the rotating scene you know right in the 1991 harley uh, fat boy there um i remember i listened to his book and he talks about how how many hours he put in and dedicated to that scene because he wanted to be able to actually do it himself um you know run the shotgun and ride the motorcycle and everything and put a lot of time and effort in getting it to do that um, but yeah just and growing up being a motorcycle guy and a gun guy that was that one always resonated with me as a really cool scene. Yeah, I like when he's reloading, he's flipping it around yeah. just to cock it and everything. Yep. yep. That was so cool. Um, um, and then the Spaz 12 from one of my favorite movies of all yeah. time, Jurassic Park. Um, just that that scene of uh, Robert Muldoon taking the buttstock and unfolding it as he, as he opens it up to go after the Velociraptor. Um, I, again, once you see it, it's like, okay, that's just like the epitome of cool, mm. you know, walking around with a shotgun and then you're ready to attack and you just fold it out and now you're ready to go. Um, I just always love those. And uh, they're very expensive. So I've looked at buying them a couple times and they're not cheap, <laughs> but they're, they're cool. So what makes them so expensive? Collector's items, I guess. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not really a shotgun guy, so I don't know a ton about shotguns. Um, but now yeah, they're they're definitely cool. The uh, M79 from Apocalypse Now. Um, grenade launchers are just cool as it is. <laughs> but that scene again, you know the the this guy here. Um, it's it's a short scene, but. They're yelling about you know people stuck in the wire, and I can't say the word they use because we're a politically correct world these days. But <laughs> he just walks up, one shot, boop. You see the explosion, and he turns around and walks away. And it's like that's it. That's just that's so a, nonchalant. yeah. It's just like hey, go get you know go get so and so, and he comes over and shoots. And and having shot grenade launchers, two hundred threes, as well as Mark nineteens, you know, in the military. It takes a lot to be able to judge that that distance and that lob and all that. And we did. We had a guy. Um, I mean, I was decent, at it, but we had a guy that you know he was the go-to for the two hundred three because he just every time he was dead on. You know, so there are people that just have that you know that knack. And so I've always loved that one. Well, and I like that it even for this one, it's got an actual butt stock and it's you know kind of like a single shot shotgun, but. You know, for the grenade launcher. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah the M seven nine. That's it. They had um, I saw one when I was in Iraq. Um, a, a one Marine unit. He had one hanging off the back of his Humvee, and I was jealous. I had a Mark nineteen, which is a fully automatic grenade launcher, but I wanted a single shot grenade launcher. Because <laughs> uh, you never know. Yeah. Um. And then we've got the lawgiver. Yes. Uh, from Dread, from the from the newer one. The older one, it, 
it's cool still, but it's not as cool as they did in the second that one. That movie was so good. Yeah, where he just shoots his way up the up the tower. Um, and I think what's so cool about this one is is the ability to select different ammo. Yeah. I've always thought that was an interesting premise and, and you know, it would be interesting if, if that's where the future is headed with firearms is being able to have different magazines loaded, you know, with different ammo and being able yeah. to select what you want. Well, then, trying to think, was this, in this one, did they, they, were by, they were bound to the person too. Yes. So no one else could blood, shoot it. Yeah, DNA or blood or something like yeah. that. Yeah. 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 I don't know how many times I watched that movie, but yeah, it was, you know, they'd have like incendiary and then they have like, you know, less lethal and you know, you just sit there and shoot whatever he needed. Yeah. But yeah, that was, God, was such a good movie. Yeah. Um, and then I had a few honorable mentions. Um, the Jatomatic, I had to look this one up because I had no idea what it was called, um, with the laser from Cobra. And if I remember correctly, the, the laser was actually uh, made by Surefire. Um, but the, uh, again, just iconic from my childhood Cobra movie. Um, I love all those 80s and early 90s Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone movies. And, and this was the one that's always stuck in my head um, of, of a unique firearm from there. I looked at a lot of those movies, and a lot of them just had, you know, the normal. Berettas and revolvers and Glocks and other things like that. And really iconic. This one, I think, is, is kind of iconic. It's just kind of weird. Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's just... Chatty Medic. Yeah. <laughs> Not a firearm, but still cool. The T-1000. Uh, I mean, when he turns into swords and other weapons. Again, just cool. Well, yeah, when he starts taking all those, like, from this one where he yeah. shot the shotgun and then all of a sudden he just... Yep. He comes right back. And my, my favorite scene from that movie is when he's on the back of the car and they shoot him off the back of the car and then John Connor takes the little piece and throws it on the ground and he walks over to it just sticks his foot on it and it just absorbs back into his foot. And it's just like, it's like that is so awesome. Um, and then the ultimate weapon, the Death Star. <laughs> yeah, when we're doing the, the list, I... That would, wouldn't have crossed my mind where, you know, we associate with just handheld. Yep. And even then, I wouldn't have thought of like a ship or something, but that's, God, that's and it's perfect because, yeah, there's no bigger weapon than that. Yeah, I was making this list and, and I was reading it to my wife and she's like, you didn't put the Death Star on there? And I'm like, no, but I will now. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the ultimate weapon. Um, and, then, and then I love this one too because there's the... Um, it's in Clerks, the first Clerks movie, where they have the debate over whether the contractors that were working on the Death Stars that weren't, you know, part of, of the stormtroopers or anything like that, they were just third party contractors when mm -hmm. they got blown up, if they were innocent bystanders or if they were oh, just as guilty as everybody else. And I've always loved that conversation too, because it's just, it's, it's interesting. It makes you think, you know, did they know what they were getting into or, you know, so. Yeah. All right, back to All right. The list. So, kind of going back to post-apocalyptic, um, Mad Max shotgun. Um, I grew up, which is probably not a good thing, but I grew up watching the older Mad Maxes, and you know he. There's a lot of different scenes he's used with the shotgun. Um, there's we've got one where I think it's the second one. Yeah, the second one, there's one dude who's got a feather mohawk, and he goes and shoots the... No, it was the third one. Um, yeah, the third one, he shoots off his feather mohawk, and Thunder then... Thunderdome. Yeah, Thunderdome. Horrible movie. Oh, I loved it. With, uh, with uh, Master <laughs> Blaster. Yeah, and yes. Tina Turner. Yes. And, oh, it's yeah. almost unwatchable now. Well, and um, they did on the Fury Road, they did like a, a uh, interview with him, he was saying that he wanted to do a Lost Boys type mm -hmm. movie, and they're pushing him to do a third Mad Max. So that's why you get that scene with all those kids in the the canyon. Mm -hmm. It was because he wanted to do something like a Lost Boys thing. And yeah, he, that's it's, kind of it was weird. It's weird. The the second one, Road Warrior, is 
the best. And yeah. you introduced me to Road Warrior, and then I remember I'd never seen it, and, and we watched it at your house for the first time. I was like, wow, this is awesome. And then I went backwards and watched the first one. I'm like, yeah. And then I watched uh, the third one. I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, and a lot of people have said, like, even Fury, if you include Fury Road into the, the mix, it's like, this is the most dedicated car series because mm-hmm. it's so focused on the car because they always have that iconic car scene. So. And in Fury Road, I think we had this conversation after the first time I watched it was, if you go into it as you're going to see a well-written, awesome storyline plot movie, kind of like Road Warrior was, had a little bit more of a storyline, you get disappointed. Yeah. If you go into it like cool cars, cool graphics, cool cinematography, that's the, one of the best movies ever. Yep. It took me about three times to get over the fact that they drive and then they turn around and drive back. That's the plot of the movie. <laughs> yeah, I wish they would have done like more like you know, they're going to move something or there's an actual, like, more to it yeah. than, oh, we stole your girls, we killed everyone, and now we're coming back. Like, yep. It was just... But, yeah, as far as the movie scenes, and then I think in, yeah, Fury Road, he gets a, another shotgun. So it was, it, you know, sawed off shotgun. I think there's a lot of other movies that have used it, but mm-hmm. that was my favorite. Um, well, when we kind of talked about the Underworld uh, Berettas, um... I didn't know they were Berettas, but the part that I'm sure everyone else says is when she's shooting out the floor. Mm-hmm. That was, you know, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And, and then started working here, then the more I've gotten into it, you know, it's, I didn't realize, you know, how many guns have compensators and know what you were saying because of the blanks so that they could actually cycle the gun. Yeah, that's that's my understanding why they have to run them in Hollywood and stuff like that to be able to stick. In the military, we had the BFAs mm. on them to be able to cycle the guns. And that's my understanding why they used to do that a lot in Hollywood to be able to cycle the guns. So, like, when you, when you when was making the list, I didn't realize how many guns have a compensator. And I, some of they don't note it, but you can tell, like, that's a big old compensator. And, and it looks cool. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. that's why the Desert Eagle's in so many guns, because it's big and yeah. iconic. I mean, you take, like, an M&P shield and... <laughs> Nobody wants to video that because it's tiny. But then you put a suppressor on it. Then you put cool. exactly. Or a Walter PBK. All right. So this was kind of. Well, I thought this was really really cool. So a movie that I don't think got as much credit as it should have was Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Very good movie. Very. Good. The movie, the storyline, I just really liked it. But there's one spot, and I didn't realize until like uh, towards the end of the movie, but he's hacking away these vampires with his axe and all of a sudden one comes up on he's on his back and he and the axe is a gun and he sits there and, and i'm like oh that's so cool yes. so it's kind of like your you know last resort i guess but yeah that was so cool and that whole scene when he shot the dude with the shotgun yeah that was a good one i, I haven't watched that one in a long time i remember when i got it and uh, I just bought it. It was like five dollars at Walmart or something. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, I'll give it a shot. And it was. I was impressed. Yeah, I it was, was. I was so surprised. Yeah, I think it was. It's 2012. So I would have been in. Oh yeah, I was. I was in Tennessee. So yeah, but yeah, I remember just watching it. I was like, man, this is so good. Um. So the next one um is the Constantine Holy Shotgun. Um. I think it was just because it was bling bling and it's kind of cool and I like the cool little crosses the crosshair and I always like Keanu Reeves movies so it was just kind of cool. I think it shot this massive flame out of it. Yeah, I don't. I remember it in the the movie. I don't remember really how it worked or anything, but I do. It was it was one of the things that kind of almost made my list too. Was was on there because I remember it sticks in your memory. Yeah, because it because it was because he has a dude. That is kind of like um, Batman's guy, where he's like, "Well, here's your weapons and all this." Or like James Bond, where they have that Batman Alfred. Yeah, Alfred, Alfred doesn't do that for Batman. No, he doesn't. Q, Q for James Bond. There you go. Yeah. And he uses those guys' weapons. Well, it was the same kind of thing. He gives them that, and he gives them like water, and then little the beetles and some other stuff. But that was like, here, here's your weapon. And then. Um, <coughs> My last one, um, 
Because I had to do some, because I know we might have, we have one, the Dread Lawgiver. Mm -hmm. So I found a honorable mention, and I was so surprised I didn't remember it. But from Matrix, uh, Mouse's Double Shotguns, I was like, why didn't I remember that? But uh, yeah, right. so cool. I didn't remember that one either. And he goes into a little case when um, the whole place is walled off mm -hmm. because they find him. And he's like, all right, well, I got to defend myself. And he pulls out those two shotguns. He's just... <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that was... I totally forgot about that. Because that was one of my... You know, that was a, a big gun movie. You know, all kinds of different guns. Like, even in this over here, he's got... You count them with the machine gun. But, yeah, totally that scene where he's just... I remember he goes into that case and pulls him out. And you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, I think this the the scene that overpowers that one so much is when they walk through the metal detector. Yeah. And then they just open up their jackets and they're just fully loaded. Yeah. Yeah. There's like oh, how many guns they have on yeah. All the guns in the world. Um, so alright, so that was our list. Um if you guys had any guns that we missed or maybe it sparked you to watch. Maybe some movies that we mentioned. Um, comment below. Let us know what you think. And maybe we'll do another one of these and pull out some other obscure weapons and stuff. But um, this was a lot of fun. It was. Yeah. No, we listing. definitely need to do this again. Of, you know, we need to do movies. Like, as we're doing this, I was thinking about the Mad Max thing. Got me going down to cars. You know, pulling iconic cars or something. Yeah. Like movies or, or even just scenes. You know, I was our iconic guns and whatnot and um if it sparks you watching new movies that's awesome um if you maybe we had some honorable mentions that we didn't mention uh comment below and you know maybe we'll review those uh we'll talk about maybe doing some cars and kind of doing other movie stuff because what we're into so um, look out for our other videos and stay safe and i'll see you on the range